Hello and welcome to the Audio Zoomcast, episode number 12. I'm your, uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic. I'm not gonna introduce myself first. Why not? Fantastic question. I am Aji Manj, Asante Goodman. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> Yo, it's your man good right here. PJ here. Small with worldwide. Rodley underscore Balboa. You know what I'm saying? And we are down a man, the odd ninja, Jason Ryan. But he's off doing great stuff, spectacular stuff. Odd ninja, you didn't know the company, you know. Uh so go, oh so sick smooth. So we switch it up today. <laughs> um we are gonna be doing something different today, as opposed to going through our top fives of some particular category as far as movies go. We decided to focus on just one movie. We all went through it, we reviewed it, and we watched it. And that movie was Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Full disclosure, I think it's a fantastic movie. I'll get into that in a second. But we did have one person who this was their first time watching it. So we want to go with their opinion first. And that, of course, is Mr. Broccoli Balboa Sucker. Go ahead. Okay, okay. So I'm going to tell you this. You know, bear with me, all right? <laughs> when, I, when, when I say this, this might be a hot take, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> me watching this, um, I'm like, yo, this reminds me of like an all white Spike Lee movie. And and mixed with usual suspects, and I'm not just saying it because of Kevin Spacey, but I'm saying it's because like uh, you trying to find out who done it and things like that. You know what I'm saying? But what I will say is like it's 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 a lot heavy on dialogue and, and very quotable things. But am I really entertained by this shit? Nah. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. It's cool. I'm out. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm just like, I, I don't, man, eh, man. Eh. Like, like what I would say is like, uh, my, my man, um, Al Pacino, it was like, yo, this nigga is amazing. You feel me? Like, like he's like, that's what I took away from that. Because it's like, it's a lot of really strong actors in this movie and shit. Yeah. And, and they got, they, they probably got their shit in later times or whatever, but Al Pacino always been that that guy. You feel me? Like like he take he takes control of the whole movie or whatever. But it's like I I don't know. Yeah, it, it just didn't give me nothing. You know what I'm saying? It didn't give me nothing. I was I will say like that might have been prime <laughs> Al Pacino. I think that was mm-hmm. probably prime Baldwin as well. But I let uh let me let someone else. Oh go. oh hold hold up hold up. I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry sir. And, and I'm gonna dismount after this. I, I just want to say that because I forgot about that. The intro, right? That shit was powerful. That shit was fucking powerful. And I was like, I forgot how good Alec Baldwin is as, as an actor and shit. And I was like, oh shit, yo. Like, but he never showed back up. You know what I'm saying? So I, like, I, I come into this movie with no recommendation, no nothing. Like, I'm just like, I don't know what to expect from this movie. You know what I'm saying? What the premise is or what they doing in this shit, but I was like, I know that stood out to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alec Baldwin's performance. And I know that uh, Al Pacino throughout the whole movie stood out to me and shit. But I don't know what to what end and shit. Like, I, like he was just like a fucking dickhead. He was like, he was Scarface, <laughs> but selling real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Scarface selling real estate. All right, let me chill out. Let me chill out. Shut your mouth. I got job in this shit, right? There will so, be no... <laughs> There will be no slander of real estate salesmen. He was Scarface yeah. selling real estate, though. <laughs> there will be no. All right. You know what? I'm going to let Antoine go next. Antoine, go ahead. You go. Yo, so so one of the great things about it is I love hearing people's take that have never seen it before. So I, I love the film. It was close adaptation from the actual play with David Mamet. And funny enough, the Alec Baldwin piece isn't even in the original play. So that's what made it stand out even more. Um, I like everybody's perspective. For me, what always stood out was, I think, Jack Lemmon's performance, um, old man. You know, he was scamming and scheming the whole time, but he had a daughter in the hospital. I like how all of them had their perspective on, you know what? It was like knives out. We all are competitive. We all are great right. salesmen in our own right. But, you know, they were all flawed because they were all knowing they were part of the scam. Even if you look at part of the end of the movie where the one dude comes back to get his money or what have you, right? He pulls Jack Lemmon into it and Jack Lemmon goes right into character like, you know, he's this global person from Amex or whatever. And I just think that what makes it great is all of their flaws. When you look at Pacino, 
and he knows he's playing on homeboy's emotions in a Chinese food restaurant. Mm -hmm. When you look at Kevin Spacey, he's trying to hold together the office, but he knows he has no control. It's too many strong personalities in there. Um, you look at Moss, uh, Ed, whatever his name is or whatever, like yeah. he's just like Harris. nasty from the beginning. Yeah, Ed Harris. And so Ed Harris is literally just trying to get his. He doesn't care about anybody there. I felt like Pacino's character, Richie Roma, you know, I felt like he kind of embodied what a salesman is all about, top to bottom, that whole thing always be closing. He was always on. And it's not until the end that you get a little <coughs> bit of humanity from him um, in different parts. But I think it's an outstanding film. It's definitely um, well done. Everybody's part was very necessary. And I felt bad for George because Moss, you know, Ed Harris kept trying to take advantage of him. And he's like stuttering and stammering through things. I'm like, no, George, you don't want to break in the office. What are you doing? <laughs> like, And so he goes through like this moment where he's actually thinking he's going to go along with them. He's like, nah. And so then, you know, Moss is trying to tell him like, well, you're already complicit in this because you've heard the plan and it's just, it's nuts when you see how everything develops all the way through the end. And it's actually pretty short, um, yeah. but it's strong each scene there. I'm going to stop just because there's other things I want to say, but I'm going to hear other people speak first. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> TJ, go ahead, man. Yeah, I guess we're just, how I don't know how deep we're going on the first pass, but, you know, Antoine, I thought that was a really good synopsis of the movie. I'll say this, like, uh, I've always enjoyed the movie. This is one of those, uh, you know, was it gems that, that Greg found? Greg's <clears throat> put us on, with, I don't know how many, with his, I'm up late, just put something in and see see what happens. Mm -hmm. This is one of those movies and it, it's been kind of classic to me ever since. Uh, my um, my take on the movie, aside from the acting, like you guys know there's high powered actors in there. Uh, the storyline was, was really good. I like the fact that they just kind of dropped us in to this office environment. And office politics are, they're, they're kind of fascinating, right? Because everybody ends up fitting into some certain personality type slot. Um, and I, like Antoine was saying, these, these guys are pretty strong personalities. But I find myself wondering when I watch this movie, okay, how did it get to this point? So for example, Williamson, to me, he seems like he's probably the youngest person there, but he's the manager. Right. Um, and they don't really respect him from what I can tell. And I guess Shelly helped him get the job. So Shelly's always, you know, trying to trying to pull and prod at him for favors because, hey, man, I got I, you know, I put you on. You owe me something. Um, the other guys. And I think they, they even said it to him. They said, you know, you can't learn it in an office. Got to learn it on the street. So they don't really respect him as a as a salesman, as a leader. And I think that because they have no respect for this man. He has a hard time running the office. And because of that, his focus is on pleasing his bosses as opposed to helping out his team. And I think that's why the leads that they have are such crap. I mean, the whole company can't be like this, right? Otherwise it would go under. So the other offices, I suspect that they probably have the good leads and stuff there. But Williams is not going to go and fight for his team, fight for a bunch of guys that don't that don't respect him or don't you know don't have his back. So <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if that if he was going to let that office just go under so that he could you know, move on to something else. Uh, in in the meantime, you got you got four guys trying to make a living, right? Um, George was a, he seemed like a really good person, like the only real good person in there who probably doesn't need to be a salesman. He probably needs to be doing something else. He's the only one, the whole movie, <clears throat> that mentioned the customers at all in any kind of context that seemed like he cared about them. All you ever hear is dead yeah. beat this. They broke, they can't afford nothing yeah, either. Yeah. No, I never, I never tried to sell a doctor or whatever, which I didn't really Patel? understand. Yeah, okay. Patel? Yeah, I, I would never, I didn't really get why you wouldn't want to sell a doctor, but the list of nurses is so great. But anyway, that's, that's for another conversation for another day. Um, so that I'm not taking up too much time, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there as the perspective that I was watching the movie from uh, and why it was so fascinating to me. Uh, Greg, I'm, I'll close on this one because uh, I got something kind of odd to say about it. So Greg, go ahead, you go next one. Oh uh, yeah, no problem. I was going to be quick. Um, See, this movie is, the brilliance of this movie to me is, it's just a pure 
dialogue acting movie. There's no real action. There's no real uh, love interest. There's there's no. I don't, there might have been one female that's had a speaking role in the entire movie. These are just a bunch of. These are just four, five, six guys that are that are have mastered their craft to the highest level, showing you how good they really are. Yeah, it, it, it's just it was just amazing to see how how well they played off each other. And I I wondered myself watching it, how much of this is the original play, or and how much of this is them because it felt very authentic. The emotions, the lines, the 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 way they spoke to each other, the way that they uh, presented their characters, it all felt very authentic. I mean, I don't know how many of y'all work with old white dudes, but <laughs> it's, it's just, it was a very old white dude vibe in there. It was just the, the level of anger that old white dudes get. <laughs> they nailed it. <laughs> Dis, disheveled. Dis, disheveled. Like, anybody got yeah. some hair, I'm going to flip it and do all types of shit with my hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Them, they don't have shit with hair. They just, they just do other things, like wash their hands. Like, but... <laughs> Al Pacino was. Ha, ha, ha. I'm like, this motherfucker look like. Goddamn. Uh, what's my man? What's my man name from Saved by the Bell and shit? Uh, Zach Morris. Like, oh, Zach. Zach, 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 like Zach, Zach Morris at one time. Then he looked like Ricky Rick, Rick, Like he looked wild. It's like, like God, yeah. this, 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 this is going crazy. <laughs> and, ain't nobody scuffle with him. <laughs> ain't nobody fight him. He just. Ha, 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 ha. Ha. Ah. Okay, new hairstyle. Right. New hairstyle. Ah. Ah. Just a whole lot of flipping and moving. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A whole, of, a, whole, a whole lot of moose and moisturizer going on. Yeah. <laughs> Al Pacino was mad. Yo. He was mad as shit. Yeah. This this right. so random anger. This <laughs> strange outburst of rage for stuff to happen in third grade. It's just a whole lot of old <laughs> pits up. <laughs> whole, whole pits up uh, energy in there. But anyway, the, the point I was making is, um, yeah, if, if you're looking at this from a perspective as just incredibly talented actors and watching it for, for the acting ability of these people, it, it's probably, it, it's as far as Pure acting goes. It's 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 got to be top. It's easily top five, and it ain't number five. It, it, it's up there with the Godfathers and Goodfellas and all that stuff for me. It's it. They did it. They did an amazing job. Like even it was even a masterclass. Yeah, even the ball busting cops. Everybody did their their, their job in there. So I that, that's what I've got to say about it. It's just as far as perspective of of, of craftsmanship. It's one of the greatest things I've ever seen on on film. I I I, I agree with everything um, that everyone has said, especially particularly about the acting. Um, the acting was top notch. I liked how uh, how tight it was in terms of the cast. Didn't go over <laughs> many places. There weren't that many people in it. Everybody gave like the best performance they could give. Um, some perspectives from the movie. First thing is that I've all if I could ever have been able to rap like decently, I would have definitely used the Alec Baldwin as a part of my mixtape opening. <laughs> uh, replacing, replacing the Glengarry leads with beats from somebody. Like these are the these are the Kanye beats and to you they're golden, to you don't get them. Why? Because they're for closers and the name of the mixtape would be closers. I mean it's obvious, baby. That's, that's, anyway. That's a, that's a great, that's it's a, a great, great idea. But these blacks aren't sophisticated out here. Anyway, so let me just go ahead and get into <laughs> this stuff. Um no, I'm just playing, but um but like it's much to like what T some of the stuff that TJ was saying, I felt like in order for them to have this type of back and forth, the way that they talk to each other, I was like, how long have these guys been working together? Like they must've been working together forever because you can't just be talking to anybody about that. And like all of these people were were, were scum humans. They were just, <laughs> they just sucked as, as human beings, man. Like they really did. Like the moment that, that they were when it was time for them to be on and be charming. They almost had like a like a like a the movie. I just recently saw Sorry to Bother You, which was a fantastic movie, by the way. Um, but there's a thing in Sorry to Bother You where they talk about people having a white voice. Like their white voice was fantastic when they got on the phone 
they completely changed their personality. As soon as they got off the phone, they turned into these just scum humans. And they just, they like, like similar to what TJ said, they looked at those customers as just, as just product. They didn't really look at them as people. They didn't respect them for what they were. They call it, like you said, they call them deadbeats. So at one point, Shelly, <laughs> Shelly was like, they couldn't buy, they couldn't buy a toaster. They're broke. They're deadbeats. <laughs> like, what do you talk about? You're trying to make your money off of these people and you're calling them deadbeats. It's like, this is, but it's so, that's so capitalistic. It's so American uh, to do such a thing, um, just the way it was. Um, perhaps the a top five uh, monologue of all time with Alec Baldwin. Um, uh, only Al Pacino and Devil's Advocate comes close, and in uh, Injustice for All, interesting that he was on both of them. But Al Pacino's performance was crazy. But even his, even his character, like the way that these these guys were going about their lives, and the, the way that they were just all scum, man. And like you, you said, you said that's the top five monologue. What the Alec Baldwin? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Alec Baldwin's monologue was crazy. I mean, like, what where, where, where do you put Denzel on Train Day? That's a top five or two for me. You yeah. just live here, motherfucker. You shot me in the ass. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it. Cause, cause I, I, my, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, you good. No, no. Because my number one. I'll, I'll just go ahead. We can go down in this road for a second. I can entertain. I can play this game. I can play this game. So, so my, my number one, right? My number one monologue of all time is "Injustice for All," the closing scene of Al Pacino when he ends up selling out the judge at the end. Um, Mm. And they're dragging him out, and he's like, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I just finished my opening <laughs> statement, and people start clapping." Yeah. <laughs> Shout out by Marilyn. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that that scene, right? That that monologue that he did was mm -hmm. insane. There were several on Devil's Advocate. Another reason why I think that that's probably one of my favorite movie, my favorite movie of all time. There were several of them. The Eddie Barzun one, uh, the Phantom Man one. Like he had several on there that were really good. The Phantom Man was on my list. That one, Phantom, was Man, Phantom Man was crazy. Oh my gosh, I'm getting chills. Uh, is, is it considered that. when when um Leonardo DiCaprio like it's, this is fucked up, but when he's like uh, talking about phrenology and shit, and he's talking about like you stab a nigga in the head and shit, and when, when he's counting <laughs> candy, you know, what I'm that's a great monologue, but he's talking about like killing niggas and shit, but. Oh. You know, yeah, talking yeah, about when he, when, when, I did when not see that yeah, 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 and shit. I did not see that movie. Hilda. I'm that's like, crazy. gosh, damn, this nigga is fucking a monster. <laughs> yeah, I did not watch that movie. That's not a top For real? Movie, but it's a great, that was a great monologue that he gave. Jesus you know? Christ. He killed that joint. Him and, Sam, <laughs> him and Samuel Jackson became, Ooh. like, I never thought that I would hate Ooh. two people as much as I, like, <laughs> I could never imagine hating Samuel Jackson and Leonardo DiCaprio. I hated both of them. I was like, oh. They did it way too good. They did it way too good. I was like, yo, I was like, this is not the first time Leonardo DiCaprio has called somebody a nigga. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yo, back to the show. Back to the show. We got, we got, we got too far afield. I'm not going to lie. This, I'm not going to lie. You guys are talking but, about it. But, but to your point, uh, to your point, <laughs> from being scumbag, right? So that's why, and TJ's point about how they had total disregard for the customers or the client. At the end, when you know Shelly the machine is kind of thinking he has this sale, and you know the office manager's like, "Yeah, the check cash is like, you know who you basically sold to here," and you see his face, he's crushed. Mm -hmm. This old man was just talking about he got it, he's got his balls back, he's back out there. I think he's about to be back on top of the world, and it's like, yeah, nah, they just like entertain the salespeople. That's it. The checks mm -hmm. never, the check cash is never going to work. His whole world was just like ended at that point. He never got over that to the point where. When he knows he's about to be arrested because at that point the office manager is like i hate you that's why i don't like you that's why he's going to just sell him out yeah. he just sits down he doesn't hear anything else al pacino's talking about richie roma you know this beautiful partnership he wants to have with him and his admiration for him etc cetera, etc cetera, and guys like them and hey we're going to go to lunch at basically the chinese food restaurant etc cetera, etc cetera. he never absorbs any of that he's just looking and he's just trying to prepare himself for what's about to help him, you know, right. what's about to happen to him. So it's well, well, crazy. Can I, can I ask y'all this though? Yeah, go ahead. See, see, this, this is where I came to this whole usual suspects vibe, whatever. So it was, it was so much alluding to everybody going to this interrogation room, like, oh, you the Gestapo, and this happened, like, it, like they, it was, it was like over the top. Every time everybody came out of that interrogation room, <laughs> shit. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like. 
we're ultimately going to go into the interrogation room and that's where we're going to find you know you know what i mean like like that that's that's what my mind was leading yeah. towards this whole thing and she was like like god what the fuck are they saying these people in this in this room and shit you know what I'm saying? like they, they was being no, like sure. regular cops um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. brings up another thing that I was, that I noticed about this office setting. Like Aj had said, how long have these guys been working together because of the way they talk to each other? I always contend, well, not always, but I contend that because the office demographic is what it is, I think they were just comfortable talking that way because that's all that was present they don't have to worry about offending anybody you know and i think yeah, yeah, yeah. we're in there with those cops because these guys are they, they're living a privileged kind of life if the cop treats them anything other than with respect they're going to feel like that you know uh, i don't know that the cops necessarily had to <clears throat> you know raise up on them and treat them like they treat us for them to feel so offended but because you know if, if you look at the way the cops were being treated by the guys in the office i mean yeah what was that all about? I mean, you're yelling at the cops and, you know, dismissing them. And, hey, man, I'll get with you when I get to you. You know? That, but you you talk about the, the the office politics, and part of that is the privilege, right? So look right. at the demographic of the gentlemen that were there. And, I mean, we won't say it on this live, but think about the slurs that were being hurled around, right? Think about how they referred to the restaurant they were going uh, yeah. to. <laughs> you it's know? A- now, we know that was that time period, but at the same time, it was free flowing, you know? Um, and it was one of those things that I think both you and I brought up, the way they talked to each other, they were not only comfortable, but there was a, a realness for me that was grounded in reality there, where it's like, hey, this is how they felt. Nobody was hiding behind a mask at that point. It wasn't like when they got on the phone with the customers or whatever like that. So they knew where they stood with one another. And I think that part of that- The office right? was prudence up in that joint. Yo, yo, I'm out. <laughs> Time out, man. Time out, man. Uh, Sean Gruden. Sean Gruden. <laughs> oh, just a bunch of Grudens up in that joint. <laughs> I was uh, I was gonna hit a thing that hit a, hit a pause button, like like where you have the dial button, not the dial tone, but it's like you're on hold. Because we needed to kind of have a timeout after that, man. It was basically the NFL, right? <laughs> this is what it was. It was the office full of Grudens. It was great. <laughs> Golly, man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, Speaking of speaking of them being uh, saying words they shouldn't say, like how they were talking about Indians in that movie, yeah, was insane. And it's like, man, Indians. You mean like Native Americans? No, nah, like or? Indian Indians. Like, it, like past oh, oh yeah, he, he said yeah. if she became. Not, yeah. not, check this out, man. It was like, kept no, crazy. No, 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 nothing was wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, go get it. <laughs> nothing was wrong with that. Like he acknowledged. Who they pray to? Like that would be like if you said to somebody that's a uh, complete Christian person, like, "Yo, if Jesus came down on his own, he was just acknowledging." Is, is, something, not, else I'm, is something else I'm missing? Yeah, no, no, that's the least respectful, disrespectful part. It was just like they were like, "I would never sell an Indian." Like I would yeah. never try to sell to them, like <laughs> as if they're all like just some kind of subclass of something. No, 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 no. Nope. I think that and was all for Patel. Patel? <laughs> Patel? <laughs> you, you got it. But, 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 but I mean, like, 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 but, but the yeah. thing is, like, like, if, if I appreciate it, if it's real, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's real, like, like, watching the movie, like, because like we watch The Godfather and shit and all types of shit. And they, well, I wouldn't sell to the Mulianos and all types of shit. That's something that affects us. You know what I'm saying? And we, we, we get more offense offended if it's not directly, you know, like like you have no understanding of who we are and shit. Like when I watched that, like somebody did some research about selling to fucking Indian people. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you trying to say? Are you all saying, I'm saying all, I'm, all, I'm, all I'm saying is like like when, when I see black people, when I see white people talk about black people or other races talk about black people. I'm more offended if you sound like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> but when I know you know what you're talking about, I'm like. <laughs> I, I think what I'll just yeah. point is. Like, <laughs> okay, I got you. In this movie, I'm stigmatized. like, all right. If they were being sure. stigmatized within the context of, of their job. Right. Like, it, it may not have been racist in the traditional sense, but it's like, if you see a name that is Middle Eastern, then automatically you put it in 
this category. Oh, yeah. Well, Automatically, they're getting searched by TSA. Automatically. That's what I'm saying. But, but, but this is a movie in 1992, and it holds true to like who they were actually. I, like, I can't. I can't judge this on on what we're doing right now. The hell, you, you can't. Know? What you mean? <laughs> yeah, you can. What are you talking about? No, no, no. I, can't, I, can't. I, you know, I mean it like this, right? I I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna be like this. Go on, go on, go on. Slavery's always been wrong. You know how I know that everyone knows slavery was always wrong? Because there's oh. abolitionists. No, so no, 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 no. I don't want nobody but, but, coming but, back to talk about But, 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 guess, but guess what? But guess what? But guess what? By, by the time somebody <laughs> made a movie about slavery, it's been about 300 years of shit. <laughs> but, but you got to admit it was, it was, there was prejudice going on. Of course, of course, but I'm, but yeah. I'm saying like like that's all he's saying. Like that's people are making is. like people are making like realistic depictions of what mm. you you're know. saying that it's based but on it, some kind of fact that that no 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 I'm, I'm just saying that they've been real to the times they've been real to the times oh, no 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 that's yeah. all I'm saying no no I don't disagree with what you're saying yeah that, that's yeah. all I'm saying it's, it's yeah, just like, you know what Greg I'm sorry yeah I think he's saying that they've actually talked to some salesmen in this field before doing this and this is how those salesmen <laughs> actually talk yeah and that's the that, reason he's talking but, yeah, but you know what that makes one. them you know what that makes it that makes those salesmen still a piece of shit that's what i'm saying <laughs> I won't, I won't argue with you on yeah, that. I won't argue with you. And, and, and I'm saying that, and I'm saying that even though that they did the research and may have said, yeah, you know, in reality, we don't really like to sell doctors, you know, lawyers, or fucking Indians. It's like, oh yeah, uh, don't no, say that. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that that gives another level of realism to me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, like, like you you're willing to fucking like. I don't. I don't know if we we consistently check Al Pacino's like level of uh, racism and shit, but he's played a lot of roles where he's. Like, Scarface is questionable, bro. <laughs> Scarface, yeah, yeah, like we, we don't know human. what he actually feels, but he's dedicated himself to his roles and shit. But he's he's fucking said a lot of wild shit. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's appropriate though. It's appropriate for that. You know, you put me in this time frame, I'm gonna say this and do this or whatever. So, like, I, I'm just saying it, it adds a level of realism to that to that movie. I'm you know not right? saying, I, I, I understand what you're saying and I agree with what you're saying. I'm just saying that from their perspectives, those oh, no. characters, of course, are shit because what they, what they, of what course, they, of, they, of course, they, yeah. of course, like, we, we offended by a lot of shit. They probably offended by that or whatever, but. Right now, I mean, every everybody should be offended for that. It's the, the time frame, right? So the shit was written like in '85 or whatever, like that. The, the play or whatever. So or it went live or what have you. And I don't that think time should frame, be offended certain... by art, though. It's it's no, art. No. Art art is supposed to evoke, right? Like, like, if, if, I, if, if I made a movie about the civil rights movement and every white right. person was nice to every black person, you'd be like, "What the fuck is this shit?" It doesn't right, make sense. That, yeah. No, no. It, it's what you're saying about it being grounded in the reality, I agree with that. What okay, I'm saying in right, terms of folks being, sure. no, no, that part, that's a fact, that's a fact. <laughs> okay. But in terms of it being wrong, it's still wrong, whether it's 85, oh, 2005, yeah, yeah. 2025. And I agree like, with you, you on that shit. That, like, I'm not, <laughs> wait a second, wait, no, wait, 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 don't, don't, don't give me that. Second. Like, like I'm, a, I'm an Indian hating person. Like, I'm not an Indian hating person. I'm <laughs> no, just saying, no, no, like, no, no, we talk about this movie, I'm just like, yo, this is dope that they captured the level of, like, negligence that, Right. white men have had you know what I'm saying like this motherfucker walked into an office and said I had fucking I made nine hundred thousand dollars last year fuck all you niggas <laughs> you can get a Cadillac some knobs or you can fucking be fired <laughs> and I'm gonna roll out <laughs> you never seen him ever get in a movie he was <laughs> like yo fuck all this shit y'all doing they, they was talking this thing with the with the watch out like oh a word <laughs> you see so this I'm just saying, like, I, I like how they, you know, realistically, you know. Wait a second, wait a second. Are you telling me that these civil rights movies have mean white people in them? Which movies are y'all watching? Let me write that. <laughs> Third prize is your fire. <laughs> Third prize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it It was harsh. It was harsh. I, I think that there was some elements of truth in a lot of the things they were saying, though, um, from their perspective as well. Uh, and how they try to take advantage of people. And I think a lot of that stuff is applicable today. You know, you think about the art of the salesman and the way that they're crafting their story and they're trying to get you caught up in emotion to write a check. 
as Alec Baldwin was telling him, get their name on the dotted line, essentially. You know, he was a lot more harsher about it. Basically, no excuses. Like, is that coffee is for closers? You got to close the deal. You don't close the deal. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Please. That mixtape would be it was vicious. special. <laughs> that mixtape would be so special. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. That mixtape oh, would be so oh, special. Yeah. In between, you know how they used to do it in the 90s where in between every song, <laughs> there'd be a segment of that monologue. If it, you think this is abuse? You think this is abuse? You, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna stop. Okay, go the rest. So no, no, with that, with that, I got a question though. What that? was everybody's favorite part of the movie? Oh, that that Alan Baldwin scene was everyone's. It had to be. This is one of the greatest rants I've ever heard in my life, and I'm talking about like in real life and in the movie. It is one of the greatest <laughs> rants I've ever heard. I'm gonna, no I'm way. gonna say, I'm not gonna say that that's my favorite part of the movie because it's everyone's favorite part of the movie. But I will say that oh, a favorite part of the movie for me <laughs> was when, <laughs> was when Moss got upset and he did his monologue and he was cussing out Ricky Rover. Yeah, oh, I tried to put it. Yeah, yeah, dude. So he's like, he got the memory of a fucking fly. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, never heard of such. A th- oh yeah, and Shelly's white bread. Your white bread. I never heard that before. I, was like, I yeah. used that thousands of times. And people are like, "Ooh, what does that mean? Ooh, what is?" That mean? <laughs> I, mean, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like my favorite part was like, "What's what's old dude name?" Like I, I know he's a, a Shelly the Machine. Shelly. No, like his real name. Jack, Jack Lemon. Jack Lemon. Yeah, Jack Lemon. Jack Lemon. Okay, when when Jack Lemon is talking, like like all the office leaves and shit, and he's stalking Kevin Spacey all the way to his car and shit for fucking <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yo this nigga like yo <laughs> yo I'm with it man like 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 let's make a deal you know what I'm saying I was like oh, this, this is this some ill shit and then Kevin Spacey him like oh 50 you know 50 dollars on the lead yeah. and shit he like nah man like like he, he essentially sold him you know what I'm saying like it, it showed you him selling him the whole way and shit. I was like, ah, damn, this this motherfucker's aggressive. You know what I mean? But <laughs> you made a good point. They 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 game each other the whole movie, right? Moss, yes, yes. Moss with uh with George, mm-hmm. you know, him purposefully yelling out loud, take the leads, right, so that he can come back later and be like, hey, I'm I got a big mouth, I can't want to go in there. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. so much game, right? There was a lot of game. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, let me ask you guys a question. I want your opinion on this. I mean, Gestapo tactics. I, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. That's not right. Oh, That's oh, right. oh, hold up. So, so. Go ahead. Right. You can go. Damn. All right. I'm just realizing this. Brock, you love this movie, man. Yo, fall back. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm realizing a lot more as I'm talking to y'all. Shit. Pardon me, God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pardon me, God. All I'm saying is like, oh, th- that's the reason that they kept coming out of the goddamn office and all this wild shit. They selling <laughs> to other people about how bad <laughs> this experience is. Damn, I'm stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stupid. OK, all right. Go ahead, yo. Go ahead, yo. All right. So, so my question. I'm not that smart, yo. Go ahead. So at the end, right? Or maybe not at the end. When, when the, the office was broken into, you know, the phones got stolen and the leads, right? Now, the the reason why Shelley got caught is because he, you know, he basically divulged to Williamson that he had information on the, the, the fact that the contract was on his desk, right? So do you guys think that Shelley took that contract to make it look like it was part of the robbery only, or do you think he did that to try to screw over Roma, who seemed like he was cool with? I, you know, go ahead. I, well, well, first of all, I didn't even think that deep into that's a fantastic question as far as the contract part goes. But I think I I had a I had a, a suspicion that if he didn't talk to Williamson and he talked to the cops, he wouldn't have got caught. He I don't think have. Shelley would have got caught at all. He wouldn't have. I think Shelly would have Sh- walked. Shelly's Jack Lemon, right? Yeah, Shelly. Yeah, Jack Lemon. Right, right, cool. okay, they would have cool. got caught. Yeah, they if he didn't, if he didn't, if he, if Williamson didn't get him to drop right there, he would have just let him walk away. He he wouldn't have got caught at all. That's number one. Number two, if I'm thinking about this right, and then you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I might be wrong, just because of the way I remember it. Um, the contracts, basically, the were, were about like the the contracts were specific to that sale that he had made the night before, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't, uh, he was, was all the only, other ones. 
Yeah, he was. He would be the only one with the contract then. Correct, because all the other ones, it sounds like whenever right. they make they make a sale, Williamson runs them to the bank that day. Right, right, right. right. But the only so, contract that would have been around would have been that one, right? So to to maybe maybe he did that to delay the fucking um the Cadillac thing. Maybe he did it. That's what I thought. Because he believed that he is in a running now with eighty two thousand dollars. Yeah, but but he he didn't have the eighty two thousand when he broke into the office, so right. That's true. He did it that night, that morning. I mean, he broke into the office and then he went and yeah. he made the sale. Yeah. So he didn't know that he was going to be in the running for that. So, so, I, I don't think anyway. Oh, I think, so, did, I think did we it was know, a little did, bit of both. Oh, good. I'm I understand. I think it was a little bit of both. I think it was the screw over Roma and to try and make the uh, robbery look a little bit more real too. He, he it was, it was There's that. purpose. Okay. Yeah, it was all purpose. It was all purpose because you know you're not gonna leave the contract around, and you know, fuck Roma. <laughs> he, he don't yeah, need it. I guess it looks like a. Is that something that just looks like an inside job anyway? Because who else would bother to steal? Such yeah, a thing? why would you take a contract? Yeah, I can see okay. stealing and, leads. And, and leads and shit. Yeah. yeah, I can see yeah. leads. And you can sell those. But what you gonna do with the contract? Doesn't matter. Just take it anyway. And, and they take, took all the phones, the which I was just like. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. They took the phones. They took the leads. They took the phones. They took. They, they were just trying to make it inconvenient and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> anything that you want to yeah. verify, you can't do it. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man. What am I gonna eat this month? <laughs> shit. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, here's another question I always had about this movie. Oh, go ahead. Part with uh, my man Alec Baldwin came in there busting balls. Does that conversation happen if Ricky Roma is there? And if it does happen, does it happen the same way? Does Roma just get up and walk out? Does he tell Roma he can leave? Does Roma he make, was, I think so. Him? I think so. Yeah. Roma was excused from that meeting because he was he was kicking. Oh, well, he was out on the cell. You know what I'm saying? But still, though, I mean, like he even if he wasn't out on the cell, I think that he would have been excused from it because even Williamson said like. Cause, Cause, remember how Moss was like he's top name on the board, so he doesn't to hear this. Yeah. Or like I said, if he, if he is there, does he still chew all those guys out and then be like, Roma's the only guy worth anything in here, and that's then not, take the lunch? I mean, how does that's this? A good point. How, how that would I think be? That's how that goes. How does that build a team environment? <laughs> you don't care about that. <laughs> this is 1992, bro. It's 1992, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, what do you tell him? I wish yeah. you good luck, but you wouldn't know what to do with it if you got it. Yep. <laughs> like, like, like people are actively saying the F word in the office, like loud. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Very like, boisterous. What yeah. are you the secretary for? Broad say hello? Telephone? <laughs> All uh, types of gee, I mean, geez. <laughs> slurs. <laughs> At tell anyway. So I just, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying it. I'll say that randomly, like when I'm walking around, like Pat tell. <laughs> Here's a, another question: Who do you think the villain in the movie was, if there was one? Who do you think the hero was in the movie? That's a better question because they're all villains. <laughs> they're all yeah. villains, like, with the exception of Gordon. Huh? Hero was Roma to me. I, <clears throat> no, Roma was no hero. You know why he's a hero? Because no. he did his job and he did it well. Nah. <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> he was that he is the was, only, I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm saying he's the hero. You know who's not, getting that kid back? Roma. You know who's gonna be able to feed his kids? Roma. <laughs> That's who. He's the hero. Everyone else stinks. Everyone else that, is going to jail or going to their next cell desperate. Roma's the hero. <laughs> Only way, only way I can preface that shit is like, because uh, it, it's not no, it's not clear cut for me. You know what I'm saying? But whoever main, what, what's the main man name that that looked like uh, uh like a Robocop with his mask off and shit? <laughs> um, <laughs> with, with the uh, with the Ed big Harris. ass forehead and shit. Ed, Ed, Ed Harris. Ed Harris. Ed Harris. Moss. Ed Harris. Ed Harris. <laughs> Ed Harris. <laughs> All right, so I I would call that, that him. The <laughs> <laughs> he looked like Robocop with his mask off. <laughs> um. <laughs> But I would call him a villain, you know what I'm saying? Every time he demonstrated himself on camera, he just was like fucking not pleasant. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, uh, Al Pacino, Roma, Roma became more of a hero to me, you know what I'm saying? But 
He's still like like you just said, everybody was like a fucked up individual shit. But if I had to think about who I liked, I would say Roma at the end, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, shit, man. Like Yeah, I go by like, who I like and who I'd want to be in this situation. Right, right, right. <laughs> George, man. I'll go George, man. Fuck it. I'll go George. Fine. And you dirt bags and big Roma. I'll, I'll go George because George, George kept his integrity. Month. <laughs> George, George had seven. Hello. Uh, uh, hello. Look, George had $7,000 on the board. All right. He kept his integrity and, and he got to, he, he had to, he got to go to lunch because he was asked to by his management to go to lunch. Oh, no, he wasn't asked. He was going to lunch. He was aggressively he asked. To lunch. <laughs> Dude, that was the most aggressive ass ever. <laughs> Will you go to lunch? <laughs> Will you go to lunch? <laughs> Yo, when he said it, when he said it back to back was the one that got me. He was like, Will you go to lunch? Go to lunch. I was like, what? <laughs> oh my God. I never heard of my like scream a passive aggressive thing to me. Like, where will you go? <laughs> I might as well. What they got, salmon and shit? How do you even get upset about it? You know, after that, you be like, fine, I'll pack some applesauce. And- <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Sounds like a good, good, good idea, shit. <laughs> Hilarious. What am I'm I mad about, you know? I'll take your idea and raise you this turkey sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Yo, now to me, the villain is uh, Kevin Spacey in this joint. Word? Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah that, that's... He's a horrible dude, man. The bad he manager. He set up Shepard <laughs> so hard for Yeah. Bill, yeah. <laughs> yeah. TJ often <laughs> says this. TJ, TJ. What's, what's that? So TJ always... Well, I'll, TJ's here. I'll let TJ say it. <laughs> Go ahead, TJ. Okay. So... <laughs> You know, you remember um, after Alec Baldwin gets finished chewing everybody out, right. and he leaves, Williamson starts handing out these old pathetic leads again, right? And he's, yeah. he's handing them out. And if you watch him closely, it almost looks like he hands Shelly from the bottom, right? So remember, Shelly made this big, huge sale, and he said, yeah, well, if it sticks, it'll be a miracle. Now, he knew exactly what leads he gave him. So he set the man up for, in my opinion, he set him up for failure. He did it on purpose. So even if he does make a sale, it won't really be a sale. That is. So he's it's definitely, like he was trying to get him out of there. Yeah, yeah he, he wanted him gone. <laughs> right? yep. even, even though he was going to get $50 for every time he's, for every time he's. <laughs> 50. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, I, 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 love that. I, I ain't going to lie to you. Like, like, like watching this movie, you know what I'm saying? It, it remind like when I was, doing sales or whatever you know a more non-ethical sale like, sale time frame you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> like no. No, no look 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 like i know where you're going i know where you're we going back on the commercial <laughs> I know, break here on how you <laughs> i know you all, all, I'm, all i'm saying is like like shit was the wild wild west and then, then they they try to put little things in place like third party verification and like little 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 things to make sure that the sale was valid and shit. Like shit was wild in that movie. I was like, that's your pitch, son? Like 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 you just come you just come into somebody's house and start playing with his fishing rod and then you just sit down. You know how <laughs> Get the fuck out my house, yo. Oh, you, oh your wife in here. No, like don't worry about that. We can go pick up together. What? <laughs> what the pick? Yeah. My wife, oh. He went too far with it. Yeah. That's crazy. But 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 that's like I was like, man, these, these motherfuckers just go hard before digital age and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like Rebates. Yeah, yeah. yo. <laughs> yeah, yo. Well, dude, yeah, you gotta remember, bro. This is like before internet, before all that stuff, man. You had to be out those streets. Was yeah. it cold calling? It was cold right. calling. You would call right. That's right. Phone book. Had to show up. Had to take that face to face rejection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I used to be a salesman. A tough racket. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is, man. Nah, that's why I had I had a respect for everybody in it though, because I thought that again, I think Greg alluded to this, they were all masters of their craft, you know? And him bringing that full circle with this was pre-internet age 
I think people forget what that face-to-face -face interaction was like. Yeah. You had yeah. to have your game face on. You had to have your yes. skill down. You had to have your rebuttals ready. And like the old man was wet from the rain sitting on somebody's couch, fucking it up. Just like, <laughs> we can pick up your wife. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> like, nah. Like, uh, what? With the toys and shit. It's like. Imagine that right now. You can like, yo, get the fuck out my house. <laughs> Nobody no, would right. this point. You look at the people all and be like, nope. <laughs> and the audacity of this dude at the end, he says, my God, I'm in the act of giving a gift away. <laughs> That's what he said as he was being let out. My God, I'm in the act of giving a gift away. Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like, my, my man made himself at home. As soon as he got, as soon as the door got open, he was like, oh yeah, let me take my coat off. Ah, oh, you got a fishing rod? Oh, oh, that's cool, you know what I'm saying? Mind you, I just watched this movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that shit bugged me the fuck. I was like, imagine somebody coming to my house and just start playing with shit in my house and taking their coat off and inviting themselves to a seat and telling me they're going to help me pick up my wife. <laughs> like, like, no, 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 we can take my car. No, Nick, I got a car. What the fuck are you talking about? Do you know my wife? Like, that shit was bugged out. Yo, but, but I mean, I, I know it's 92, so I, I ain't going to trip about that shit. Rock, you are gonna watch this movie again, and again, I will. And I you're gonna be you. like, "This movie is dope as hell." <laughs> so I, you, you're gonna watch it again. You're like, you know what? This movie is dope as hell. I, I don't have. I don't, I don't think it's not dope now. It's just certain things I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Because like, like I, I, I don't have it. any. I didn't have any context going yeah. into it, so I'm like, what am I walking into? But I, I tell you this. This last thing I'm saying, shit. But like, I, I watched um, something where people saying like, you need to, like, as a man. You know, uh, acting will benefit you and learn how to sell will benefit you. And there's two things in this movie and shit. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you that fucking Al Pacino can sell you anything right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh. at this point in time, like, like what he studied, you know, I've been around people that are real actors and shit, and that shit is different when people have a, they, they know how they want to speak when they talking to you shit. Mm. And they know how to do all this other shit. And people that know how to sell shit. So, this is a perfect movie for that. I'm gonna watch it again with no expectations. That's what I said. I like it. Uh, like I said, man, I came across it on an accident. I was trying to find something to fall asleep to. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look at this. This looks boring as hell. I put that, <laughs> I put that joint of easy on. I was half asleep and then all of a sudden, <laughs> I turn around and I see Alec Baldwin with a pair of brass balls in his hand, chewing people the fuck out. I was like, uh-oh, I had to stay up and watch the rest of this. And, I, and after that, I had to I screamed that jumping the ball time. Y'all got to see this. <laughs> this is crazy. Who, who, who y'all like, think did the best in that movie? I was like 15. I didn't understand anything that was going on. But I just know <laughs> that that was one of the worst ass chewings I ever heard in my life. And I didn't even really respect the movie until I was like 20-something. <laughs> Who, who y'all think did, did the best in that movie? Like like acting wise, as, as far as like, who who had the best performance in that movie? I think Jack Lemmon did. Word? Because look, Al Pacino, I'm used to seeing Al Pacino on that level, that skill level. <laughs> I mean, that's nothing new to know to see him kill it. <laughs> but all, my only reference for Jack Lemmon was like grumpy old men back then. Yep. And to yeah, <laughs> see him yeah. do this, I was like, wow, he's really good. Yeah. I didn't know he had it in him. I thought he would just, Hanging out with the guy from Dennis the Menace and doing crazy shit. But <laughs> Dennis the yeah, Menace. Hilarious. I think I might agree with I think I might agree with Greg because he had to he had to display the most range. He and, did. He did. You know, didn't he look guilty? Like when when he got caught yeah, up in the yeah. words when William yeah. said, You got an alibi? He looked he looked guilty to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you're good. I'm telling I'm telling him him walking Kevin Spacey. <laughs> From the office <laughs> to the car, <laughs> sold it for me and shit. I was like, this motherfucker trying to make a deal. He had him up against the car. He had him in the, in the office. He's like, nigga, I'm not leaving till you give me the goddamn lease. Fuck. Yo, he put out a little couple of dollars and she's like, yo, <laughs> nigga, what, what you trying to do? Like, he, he had a rebuttal for everything that he said until they got to the car and shit and he mm -hmm. just blanked out. So That's like the last time I saw someone that aggressive was walking out the club. That's the last time I seen anyone go that hard. No, 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 I gotta stop that. Yo, Antoine, who did you think of the best club? Settle down, bro. She might be that uh, <laughs> hey, look at the club. You, this, you talk about club grabs, the club grab when he grabbed my arm. The elbow grab. <laughs> 
Yo, that's comical. <laughs> nah, I think same thing, Jack Lemon for me. Um, Rock brought it up where he sold him in the car. It's pouring down raining. He didn't give a fuck. He was literally locked in on what his objective was. He went and knocked on the door where the door was locked. Like, yeah, you're going to open it. He opens it. He sits down, wetting up his little seats and shit, and just continues <laughs> back on with what he said. And I'm just like, yo, even when he's caught and he realizes, if you watch his face the moment he realizes, oh shit, I talk too much. Mm -hmm. Watch out, he changes and he tries to spin it on Kevin Spacey. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. fuck are you talking about? Oh no, da da da. He tries mm -hmm. to get busy and shit. He was doing like Jedi mind trick shit the whole movie that was just, it was brilliant because one, I give him props, he was hella old already at that point, right? And so his mind was working on a level with his face. Usually old people movies just have like old people face, but no. You saw him fucking like, cause they'll be like, he gets the Oscar and I'm like, he's just old, he has wrinkles. He just looked at the camera. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but Jack Lemon was working this character on ways that just blew my mind, especially the first time I ever saw it because he was a manipulated him. Then he'll turn around and he'll give like this soft sell. Same thing he was telling them about how to do the customers. And you got to understand it for why they call him Shelly the Machine. Like, he literally never fucking stopped. He had something. Somebody just said it. He had a rebuttal for everything. And mm -hmm. I mean, Hell yeah. it's one of those things. It's like, damn, maybe I need to get better at this shit when I'm talking to people. That, like, <laughs> oh. It's crazy. That nigga was nonstop. He came in there like, yo, I sold four units, 80,000. Put my shit on the board, son. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm about to tell you my story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. happening? Oh, that <laughs> war story, story. That war story was crazy. <laughs> that <laughs> war story was crazy. Yeah. I'm about to tell you my shit. <laughs> you did a sideboard. I didn't even know there was a sideboard there. <laughs> <laughs> that joint was wild, yo. He said I held the pin off for of five minutes. <laughs> yep. yep. How long five minutes is to, to be just sitting there looking at a nigga with a pin in your head? <laughs> that shit is so exaggerated. <laughs> five minutes straight, you just hold the pin out like, no, no, you didn't do that, yo. You did not do that. Come on, yo. Bet, although it was a short appearance, I'm gonna say Alec Baldwin. That was uh, later. That's, that's, I gotta that's, say, yeah, that's Alec great. Baldwin, he stole the show because 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 <laughs> like he did. He stole the show. Like he came off the bench and gave him a quick twenty five. Like, <laughs> like he came off the bench. And gave him, like, so Robert Ory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's my man? Uh, Vernon Maxwell, yo. Uh, yeah. No, Benny Johnson. He was like, Benny Mike. Was, yeah. Benny <laughs> yeah. 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 Benny, hey, Benny Johnson. Johnson. Uh, yeah, joke. man. But, uh, he came out the bench and got buggers. I ain't gonna lie to you. But, yeah, but he, he, the sixth man of the year on. No, because no you know, you, you know, honestly, he might be an accomplished actor mm -hmm. in terms of like other stuff. Um, but I've never seen a role that even comes close to what he did in this movie. Like, not even close. Like, The Departed, he did somewhat of this, but it was not. He did a great job. I love it. I'm not what he does in those seven minutes. Yes, it's that's like, a career worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think niggas be sleeping on Alec Baldwin, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you talking about range, you know what I'm saying? Like, this niggas be on uh, Saturday Night Live and shit. I'm not maybe, saying maybe, maybe, maybe he's not. He, maybe he's not good for a long movie. I'm. Just I'm you put saying, that nigga in the spot, he gonna get crazy on you. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that he like, was yo, in a this movie. Nigga wilding. Huh? He was in a movie with monsters. I mean, like Ed Harris is a monster. Al Pacino is a known monster. Oh, word. Kevin word, Spacey yeah. is a known monster. <laughs> you know, and of all, and, and he he killed it. Like he stole the whole movie. But, but he, he he's another person that plays himself though. Like he he's a fucking dickhead. <laughs> he's a, he's a dickhead. It's not hard to do. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the coming in and just be flashy and shit and talk shit to people and, and just berate everybody in the room like. Like that, that's why he was on Saturday Night Live playing the president. Like he's a <laughs> dickhead. Like, he, <laughs> like he, he plays a dickhead very well, yo. I, I wish he would have been Trump and been like, you see this watch? <laughs> 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 yeah. But that was the funny part of the movie to me. He's like, what's your name? This is my fucking name. He's like, oh shit. Yes. What can you You say? pulled up in a Honda. Yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. We <laughs> like, That was, yo, as far as flexes go, that was one of the meanest flexes ever. 
He took off his watch, laid it down. Left it he, there. His watch. This watch costs more than your car. <laughs> That's who I am. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck you. <laughs> wow. Yo, he, yo, Greg, you know what was the, the most disrespectful of all that stuff? Was that he left the watch there until the end and only came back to get it to say, you wanted to know who I am? I mean, well, he said, you know why I'm here? I told your bosses, your bosses, bosses to fire you because a loser is a loser. And then he put yeah. it back on. It was like, you know, wha what? That was <laughs> what? It was like, what? Got here because of them told me to do a favor. I said the real favor would be to fire your because a loser is a loser. It's a loser you gotta is a fight this guy. You can't let him. Yeah. You can't let him get away with that. You gotta steal him or something. I say, yeah. I, I say, I say it all. The, I say it all the time. Real talk. They would. They wouldn't, they they wouldn't, you can't they wouldn't have had to wait for the police. Like for the next man. morning, they would have been a crime that night. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta catch like, oh, the charge. I might have me. They did take that ass chewing quite well. I mean, like, <laughs> they, really did. they really did. Some people got on the phone immediately. I mean, like, yeah, right, right. Like, you know what? I'm motivated. <laughs> well, uh, what, what's, what's my name? Uh, Ed, Ed, uh, Ed Harris. Ed Harris. Yeah, you're Harris never going to be Robocop. Robocop, Robocop. Half head Robocop. You know what I'm saying? But he, he was bucking back. You know what I'm saying? He was bucking back, trying to do his little thing and shit. But, you know. Alec, like I, I didn't, I don't know what the fuck his name is in the movie and shit. He just Alec Baldwin and shit. He just show up and be Alec Baldwin and shit and just be. Yeah. They never, he never gave a name. You he know what his name? Nah. Name. Wow, he ignorant. Name. That his name was fuck you. <laughs> like, like he, 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 re, he reminds me of like him and um, I get the same vibes from what's what's my man name uh, Vince Vaughn and shit. Huh. Oh yeah, evil, great. ignorant well, ass himself. white man and shit. <laughs> with, a big, with a big stature and shit. And when they come in the room and shit, they just gonna talk crazy to you and shit mm -hmm. and tell you how everything is possible and how they can do everything better than you. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Like Alec Baldwin, <laughs> Vince Vaughn. Anytime I've seen Vince Vaughn, it's like, I'm better than you. This is why you're doing shit wrong. And whatever. So, yeah. Right. His level, Vince Vaughn's level of confidence on film is amazing. It's astounding. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you anything like that in real life, like you want to be with that guy? You want to hang out? <laughs> I, I, I think he, I think he's that him and Ben, yo. yo. I think he's that. <laughs> like, his level of confidence is astounding. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen him do interviews and shit. I'm like, yo, he's really that person. <laughs> like, he's really <laughs> that person. And, and matter of fact, when I seen Alec Baldwin, um, um, have, have his uh, like the, the little private tapes and shit. We was cussing, <laughs> we was cussing his daughter out or some shit. He was talking about crazy shit. Yeah, he called. Oh, yeah. oh, he's that guy. Like he's that guy. Look at my watch, and uh, I made nine hundred seven seventy thousand dollars this year. <laughs> <laughs> One of the funny, crazy asshole parts in the movie too. I don't remember who said it. They were like, "You want to be a nice guy? Who gives a fuck? Go home, be a wife for your kids." And I was like, "Yo, Alec Baldwin said it. You want to be a wife? <laughs> so it was him. Yeah, kids. yeah, Alec Baldwin <laughs> yeah. said it." <laughs> or his rain, his rain. Nice. He probably he made that like, shit on his own. Sheesh. He probably he said, wrote that. He like, said, "Nice guy, I don't give a shit." <laughs> right, great father. F you, go home and play with your kids. You want to work here? Closed. I'm telling you, this mixtape is gonna be crazy. All right, yo, yo. <laughs> yo coffee is for closers, son. Coffee is for closers. Co coffee is for closers. Hey, look, we're gonna do it differently. Usually, we give you the three things you can always take from the Hollywood podcast. <laughs> But today, we're not going to do that. We're going to let everybody give their last take on the movie. So I'm going to go in reverse order, kind of. TJ, your final words on Glengarry, Glen Ross. Final words. Um, as you guys heard us breaking the movie down, it's a, it's a masterpiece movie. It's a very, very layered. You know, there's just, there's so much to scratch at. I mean, Brock, you know, I, I think you did a great job seeing it your first time. I've seen the movie multiple times to, you know, to to come up with the the kind of perspectives that I'm that I'm sharing right now. Um, so if you haven't seen it, go out, you know, give it a watch, and you tell us who the hero is. Uh, Antoine. Yep, same thing. Go see it. It's an amazing film, a masterpiece, powerhouse performances, and at the same time. Be inspired by Alec Baldwin. Don't be like him, though. <laughs> Greg. Yeah, if you if you are a fan of uh, 
of pure acting. This is this is a joy. It's, it's a must see. Like if you plan on trying to act in the future, this is something you need to watch and study. Uh, it's an amazing it's an amazing film, and uh, I said it's it all time classic performances by all time classic actors. Mm. Rock. Uh, what I would say is like my first watch on this, I would say it's like it's a very well written movie. Um, as far as like the dialogue and, and you know things like that, uh, it's gonna take you a couple times to re-examine what people have said. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's not like it's gonna be a whole bunch of action and this and that or suspense or whatever, but it's just, it's a lot of gems and what a lot of people are saying in these movies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because like it's, it's an adaptation from a um, a play, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so I think, you know, they probably lean on a lot of the dialogue and shit. So if you just come in and just like, oh yeah, just, let me just watch some shit, whatever, now, now you're gonna have to rewind this and like, oh yeah, that's some amazing shit that that person just said. So yes, like you said, am I pointing the right way? Yes. I'm gonna watch this a couple more times because like I think I missed a lot of things that were said. And don't all in bad. all great movie. Yeah, don't feel bad about that at all because I'm telling you, everybody on, on here outside of yourself, like the fact that you watched it for the first time to people who like uh who, who came across this movie, anybody who's come across the movie just had to watch it several times. It's not like they right. just watched it. I don't know anybody who's just watched it once who's ever seen it. But it's right. a sleeper, it's just also a sleeper film as well. Like it's it's it like to to certain people you're like wow you just you just saw that movie that's crazy you're gonna watch it several times to other people they wouldn't know what you were talking about at all like if, if you said this thing like when Gary getting lost like what the hell is that like <laughs> they wouldn't know what, even what you were talking about so I thought you did a good job as far as from your perspective but um as far as I'm concerned uh if if you don't feel like I'm a person who does who watches stuff based off of my mood. If I have a bad day at work, one of the movies I used to watch is Glenn Gary Glenn Ross because I'd look at it and I'd say, you know what? Job wasn't that bad after all. <laughs> so that's why uh, I love the movie. It's a it's a classic in my opinion. Master class in acting, as everyone said. Uh, and if you want to see one of the perhaps at least in my opinion, a top five monologue of all time, gotta watch the movie. Which probably could be another category we go through at some point. That's not that. Five monologues? Yeah. Yeah. That's a free Appuccino joints in there. Easily. Yeah, man, I gotta, you know what, man? I don't have to look, you know, Black Dynamite probably got a monologue that I could put in there. <laughs> I got one. Yeah, from what? Black Dynamite. Hell yeah. Okay, don't give it away. We'll, we'll, we'll no, work no, on. no, I won't. I won't. <laughs> we'll work on this later. But until next time, guys, peace. Peace.